Today, we take a look at all of the previous leaks for Zen 3 and its possibilities. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So, AMD. Some people at the company teased an announcement, which was then announced for the announcement of their upcoming next-gen CPU and GPUs. Yes, I'm making fun of their marketing. Anyways, we got the next-gen Ryzen announcement on the 8th of October, and today we're taking a look at the big changes from Zen 2 to Zen 3. So, next-gen Ryzen. It should be called Ryzen 4000, like expected, but rumors are popping up with a possible change to 5000 for the naming scheme. It's just the name though, so who cares? The next-gen family of CPUs will sport Zen 3 cores. We've known through some epic documents that this architecture would feature some changes to the cache. Instead of 16 megabytes of L3 cache for groups of four cores or CCXs, Zen 3 would have a unified 32 megabyte block of L3 cache for all eight cores on each chiplet. From the preview video, we also know that AMD is sticking with two chiplets per desktop CPUs. This means that we still get a max of 16 cores for the upcoming generation. But, and I'm super excited about this, the new cache system allows for way more core configurations. Because the cache was split between two four-core CCXs, a certain sense of symmetry was necessary for Zen 2. You could have four cores, which is either all four on one CCX or two cores on each CCX. Those are the R3 3300X and 3100 respectively. Or you could have six cores, which was three cores per CCX. That was the 3600. 8 cores, which was both CCXs being completely active, that's the 37 and 3800X, or multiple of these thanks to the second chiplets. So the core counts could be 4, 6, 8, 12, or 16 cores. In Zen 3 though, the whole chiplet becomes the CCX. This would technically allow for configurations like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 cores. I highly doubt that a 5 or 7 core CPU will be released, but the legendary one of most confirmed that a 10 core CPU based on Zen 3 will be available for the next gen Ryzen. With a 10 core available, it wouldn't surprise me if a 14 core would also make its way into the stack. This would allow AMD to create a much more granular choice for consumers, and don't even get me started with Threadripper with all of the options between 20 and 64 cores. So, what else would be new? Well, we would also get the curve optimizer in BIOS. In Zen 2, whenever you changed a clock speed for a single core or a few, the rest of the cores would automatically sort of adjust themselves, preventing you from boosting just one core if that's what you wanted. That's one of the reasons why most people just boosted all of the cores. This new curve optimizer would allow you to configure each core's max clock without limitation. So you can pick and choose the best core and just crank it up. It's basically AMD giving you the rain over their precision boost algorithm and saying, do your thing. Another feature that will be added for Zen 3 is a more flexible Infinity Fabric. While we only had the choice to run in 1 to 1, 2 to 1, or completely decoupled mode for Zen 2, Zen 3 will either have more dividers or a flexible one like we have in Ryzen 4000 for mobile. That specific flexible Infinity Fabric is not detailed though. Essentially, for Zen 3, AMD is tuning the heck out of its architecture, giving us more flexibility and more choice. Before you ask, Ryzen 4000 or 5000, whatever it will be called, will still be compatible with the AM4 socket. Does this mean you can put it in your X370 board? Well, maybe, but probably not. Technically, Ryzen 3000 series processors without graphics aren't even compatible with the 300 series of boards, but a lot of manufacturers updated their BIOS for it to a point where you could run a 3950X on an 8320 board. Highly ill-advised. Do not do this. The only officially supported platform for the upcoming Zen 3 based Ryzen processors will be B450, X470, B550, and X570. And honestly, even if you have a B450 board or even an X470, you might want to consider a B550 or X570 board if you plan on overclocking. Why? Well, the curve optimizer will only 
be available for those two chipsets. Also, don't expect AMD to unveil B650 or X670 boards as they are not scheduled for this year. And lastly, let's talk about availability. Zen 3 will be announced on the 8th of October and according to Wanosmus, will be available for purchase in late October. So we're really not far from it. So yeah. That's a whole lot of Zen 3 for you guys. What are you guys most excited about? The uh, overclocking potential of the curve optimizer or the more granular choice in core count for the consumer? Let me know down below. And that is pretty much it for today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.